Okay guys, there we are back again with Da Vinci J15, the one and only one. And what we will be basically doing today, this is a very special episode. We will, with Da Vinci J15, look at the Bitcoin charts. He is using in that episode some indicators he has not been using before. And he actually has some predictions which yeah, say that there is a roller coaster right ahead of us that we should fasten our seatbelts. So make sure you stay here. What we will also do is we will catch up with the US dollar tether FUD because a lot of people have been asking us. Da Vinci J15 has his very own hypothesis to that. That will be really interesting, guys. You do not want to miss out on that. And in the end, we will be also covering three different altcoins where yeah, Da Vinci will basically go in, say where his potential buy levels will be, where his potential sell levels may be and all around those trades. So that will be really interesting. So the last thing to say is Da Vinci, thank you so much for taking your time. And as always, we want to get into the most important question of today. Da Vinci J15, how are you doing today, my man? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, Chris. Uh, you know, my leg, my foot is getting better day by day. Uh, it's still not perfect. I can't walk very far without a uh, crutch, but most of the time I'm walking without a crutch. So very good. I'm happy about that. You did a great job walking in Moscow. I mean, every guy, everyone who watching that, you know that we've been in Moscow and Da Vinci made kilometers and kilometers. If they didn't order us a nice Mercedes Maybach, um, we were walking and he was doing a very great job. So his leg is already at 96% or so. Let's wait for the last 4%. Guys, make sure you smash up the like button to get Da Vinci's leg to a 100%. And <laughs> before we go into the altcoin prediction and this roller coaster a road a ride which might be ahead of us da vinci before we do that we want to actually thank the sponsor of today's episode just for a, a very bit thank you so much for sponsoring us and this is about crypto buyer and those guys are yeah very interesting we talked about uh, to them they are very um, yeah honest to us and what they are doing is they are doing point of sale devices and crypto atms as you know crypto atms are very important to push the um, yeah mainstream adoption forward so you can go to their website cryptobuyer.io you can check out for merchants using the point out sale uh, point of sale devices you can go to the atm network check out where the bitcoin atm locations are because they have those locations it's a working business since 2015 so quite interesting to have a look at check out the link in the description and here you will also find the coinil ieo launchpad where they are actually conducting an ieo the first round is already over the second round has um, just started right now so check that out also link down in the description down below but as always guys we want to remind you for each and every investment decision you do always invest um, always invest what you are willing to lose and very important make your own research for each and every investment decision and invest at your own risk that being said guys thank you so much check out the project thanks for supporting the channel and let's get straight into the content with the one and only da vinci j15 all right uh, thanks chris you know interesting the, the point of sale sale uh machines is what they sell i want to check that out actually because like i'm very interested in that that uh technology because the reason why is this is what's going to drive the sales of uh drive the price of bitcoin higher is when we start using it directly in stores and stuff like that and do, is it just bitcoin or do they support other currencies i'm sorry for asking yeah <laughs> it's no it's no problem <laughs> guys that wasn't even planned but we we, we didn't send um, also too many informations before and it's also litecoin and dash and so on so um yeah they, they have they have more currencies on that devices also i mean it's it's harder to scale the physical devices like also pundi x is doing it you can see that it is hard to scale everything online social media easy to scale for the physically backed stuff it's harder to scale it might be also a reason for the race so um yeah thanks for asking that we would obviously send you the questions after uh, the the link afterwards da vinci um right. so now let's get into the altcoin no into the bitcoin section first yes yes let's talk about bitcoin and, and what's going on i'm going to share my screen because you know it's very interesting here you can see my screen right yes sir Okay, so right now we're looking at the, the one hour chart. You can see that the bowler bands are squeezing here. They squeezed really tight here and then it tried to break out, but then, you know, this is just choppy action. 
um, going on here because Bitcoin is like a little confused and dazed from all of this. Uh, this this big move down cause we'll talk about the cause of this big move later on, but. Um, as you can see in this in this channel here, it's creating a channel, downward channel, and you're like, oh no, Bitcoin's going down. Really? Okay, let's take a really good look at that. Because <laughs> that's what it looks like from the, from the average person's point of view. But one, we have lots of support down here. So even if it does come down, it's probably going to bounce off these support levels here. And we can take a look, we can see that there's actually volume divergence. See, pr pr price came down here, right, and created a new low in the volume, then went back up, and then came back down, created a new low, but not a new low in volume. Hmm, mm. that sounds Salt fishy. Salt divergence like. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really fishy. So that volume divergence indicates that just the market doesn't really want to go down and this divergent has a divergence has been confirmed because from here to here this was the high point mm -hmm. and then it came down here and then it broke out from this high point over here but look at that it's divergence because people want to buy this thing but the market's not letting it go up but yeah. those buyers are very very strong so that's a good sign very good sign mm -hmm. for bitcoin going higher uh, another good sign here is that uh, that's not fully completed is that there's also divergence here, but it's not confirmed, right? You can see this is the high point, high watermark here point for the Willy, and this is the Willy. I probably haven't talked about the Willy uh, in our previous episodes. Uh, I like the Willy for um, looking for dabbles as well because the word Willy works on uh, well on, for dabbles as well as the RRSI. That was just basically when there's a, a W market, W in uh, price and a W in the Willy. I like to tend to take a, a trade off of that. Not with, not unless the W, if the W is above the market, above this, uh, what's this volume um, average pro volume uh, average that price here, the yellow mark here, this is a yellow line yeah. is the average of all of the volume. And this line is like every time a volume, every time the volume uh, increases, goes up. This thing goes up with, in the number, and uh, when volume goes down, this goes down. Now, if if this takes an average of those numbers, this this, this fast moving um, uh, uh, as, uh, uh, indicator, and takes the average and puts it in this line here. So this is the average of this fast moving line that keeps going up, down, up, down, really fast when sharp moves. And so it smooths out everything. And if this average, if the market is above the average, I don't look for longs, right? Even though I look for, I really look for shorts. So a short is probably like here, like here, 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 here. I, and I have to have the same value, same kind of look where it's an exact W or an M for a short mm -hmm. uh, in, in the in the Willy or the, uh, the RSI. But that's not happening here, so no, I'm not looking for short. So that's 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 just my explanation of the dabble, basically. If anybody wants to know, and that's not enough for you to trade off of. Please don't trade off the dabble unless you have a complete understanding. There's a lot more to it. I'm not going to go into it in this video. I just wanted to go do a quick explanation of the dabble since I mentioned it here. It's like now, one piece of the puzzle only. Exactly. You only understand a small piece of the puzzle for the dabble. Um, here we can see also divergence in the in the MACD. So that's the second perfect. divergence right now. We were looking exactly. at the first one. It was confirmed. Now we are looking at the second one, which is, I don't know, is it confirmed already? Yeah, this was the first one. Sorry. This was the first one. This one's confirmed. Yes. Right. You can see it's confirmed here. Mm -hmm. And this one, you can see that that's the very clear divergence, perfect. right? Price is coming down, the volume is going up, and this is a second second divergence with the Willy, right? Uh, price has, has come down here and then went back up and came back down and went to a new low, but didn't make a new low on the Willy. And you can say that's true with the RSI, but it's a very, very small uh, uh, divergence. Yeah. But this one's extremely clear. But it hasn't it hasn't broke to 
uh, to a, what's it called, a confer- confirmation, meaning that yes, it's good to go, right? Um, this is why, even though we have two divergence here, both of them are not, well, three actually, three divergence. One in the price, one in the uh, well, not one in the volume, one in the uh, the uh, Willie, and the other one in the uh, MACD here. You can see that they're not. This is not confirmed, and because they're not confirmed, I'm not 100% convinced on taking a trade here all the way back up to this point. Now, I'm convinced that price will come back here. This is called a gap. Mm-hmm. Right when the market does a gap uh, move, where price basically is like moving so fast that it jumps from this price here, this closing price, all the way down to this opening price, wow. and then goes all the way down. That's a disturbance in the market, and the market tends to fill those gaps. And I'm excited to see this because not only is this gap, uh, if like get filled, meaning the market trades to trade back up here, but it's also at the 61.8. Oh my God, how could you like, it's like, you have like, you have the perfect setup here. All you yes. need is the price to set up to take your trade. Look for the price to set up down here to take your trade. It's almost set up, almost. And you've got a trade to make some money right up here with a stop loss down here. It's basically what you love most. I mean, you have you have this perfect setup, and the the your your scaling out price would actually be the sixty one point eight, which is your most loved Fibonacci level. Exactly. Well, the market loves it. Bitcoin loves the sixty one. And therefore, so you love it also because it exactly. paid your house. <laughs> you got to be careful here with this trade. This trade, you know what? Right now, it's only a forty percent chance. Once it once it confirms, once these two confirm, one of these things confirms, whether it's the Willie or the MACD confirms, you got a 55% chance. And that's good enough to take a trade, but for the average person is not good enough because you the chances are, you know, 50 55% up here. Meanwhile, you, you're spitting in the wind and pissing in the wind. <laughs> With this trade two trade location. So that's that's so, that's the two that's the two short locations there, the big one and the short one. Which one is the which exactly. one is the, the big Europe one you're pissing in the wind, the short one you're spinning in the wind. So so, uh, so you're you you've got a really tough time to with this trade, right? Uh, if you're trying to make one. Yeah. Uh, you know, another thing you've got to watch out for is that Bitcoin has broken out of all these different trend lines. So there's no trend line here except this one that it could trade up to uh, in the next little while. And yeah, you know what? We're getting, it looks like we want to have a roller coaster ride in some direction. Mm-hmm. It's just not, in, we don't know which direction yet. We, we can say right now, at this point, it's only 40% the chance is going to go higher up to here. Um, and and uh, the odds are low that it's going to come down. The odds are better that it's going to come down. So yeah, I would uh, I take it. I would proceed with caution. If you're stuck, if you're like trapped up here, if you were one of those FOMO-y persons up here, uh, what should you do, right? Uh, well, to be honest, you have to you have to take a stop. You have to take losses here. If the price breaks down here, you cannot cannot stick around. Five thousand. Just, just don't stick around. Uh, even though it might come back up at you, come back and you go, oh my god, I'm so that's how the market works, right? Uh, you have to you have to leave it, right? Because uh, you you're risking a lot. Because this thing could uh, this thing could dump really hard, really fast yes. on you if it breaks down this this level. Um, especially, and if if you really want to, if you want, really want to hold it. Um, for a little bit longer, this this is the absolute level, the 4900 level is the absolute level that you can stop, is take a stop loss. But that's dangerous because it could it could gap down really fast, yeah. hard on you, and you could you could try to sell on this level, and this could be like no sellers, right, to get get yourself out. So be careful, be careful. Exactly. So if again, if you have some up here, you could hold it and wait for this gap to come back up. 
and sell at this gap. So maybe even before it, just before it, just to like, so you're sure. Okay, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> right? Yes. And uh, yeah, don't get uh, FOMO-y if Bitcoin, if somehow they push Bitcoin up to, to the 5,800 because all they're going to do is, if they get it up here, is all they're going to do is just get the, the, the just stopping out the, uh, the, the shorts, the getting rid of the shorts mm -hmm. uh, for the, the big dump. And that's it. It's over. And, and the whole so, urine and urine and spit will just come back to the traders in the face. Exactly. <laughs> that's not something you want to have, guys. Um, let, let, but let me say something, uh, because you, you said that at the moment it might be not a high probability for Bitcoin going up, at least not high enough to take a trade right now. But the, the beauty about that is we exactly wa know what we have to wait for to get a probability which might be big enough. And that is for the MACD divergence and for the Willy divergence oh. to confirm, isn't it? Oh, yeah, or. Yeah, or. Matter. Only one. One is enough, isn't it? Yeah, one is yeah. enough. Okay, one is enough. So w once they confirm, you would actually say with the 55 probability, which is higher than, um, w which is more than enough bec because you have a good edge um, to take that trade. So yeah, let's you say. You got a coin flip, but. The It's 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 good enough for for like the day trader, and then the day trader's got he's got this this gap up here, meaning mm -hmm. that it's gonna break this trend line in order to refill this gap. You know, even if prices were to do it today or in this hour panel, it's breaking this gap. So uh, yeah, you've got a good chance of uh, of uh, of uh, of taking a good trade as a day trader. Just but as a day trader, they understand it. You know what? Uh, there's a bigger chance. There's a Bigger than normal chance, like 45% chance that this all goes to hell in okay. a handbasket. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> first of all, thank you for that. And also thanks for the great picture for your two short locations. I think that will stay in the head of a lot of viewers out there. Maybe we can exactly, maybe we can zoom a little bit more out. Um, yeah. Let's say we confirm these indicators. We go up um, to the to the 61.8 level, 5,380. Um, Do you think it might be rolling over and then go down? And if so, what will be the price levels you will be looking at? Well, I'm I'm thinking this this if we don't break this level here, which is going to be tough for those guys to do, really tough, um, because um, well, for several reasons. But anyways, I'll discuss that in the next uh, in the, when we talk about the the, the Bitfinex scandal. Uh, I really think that uh, we are going to come down here to this 200-week moving average uh, and to test it. And that's like a 55, 50, 35, sorry, 35, 64, yes. uh, $3,564. And uh, then we're going to bounce from there. Now, um, it could go a little bit lower. It could be a little bit Lower, like down here, touch these number of levels here, but getting close to 3,100, I think that's not in the cards unless we're unless we're up at the the, the 5,800 level, so for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're good. We're too good to go. So what you said in Paris is still in place. Let's say we jump higher, crazily higher, close to the 6,000 level, then you are still sticking to. There is the chance to go lower, to maybe even, but a small chance to maybe even break the previous low. But the highest probability lays in that we will form maybe a double bottom at the, at the 3,150, but more certainly even only touching the 300, 200-week MA, which is really um, going going higher and higher right now. Before it was at 3,150, now it's already at 3,600 3, because of the recent price pumps. So you think that the probability is way higher to form a double bottom at the 3,100 level or to touch the 200-week MA, which is at 3.5K. Exactly. And so, you know, that if you're interested in buying, Uh, I would uh, I would start your buying at set of the 4100 4200 level and all the way down just just you know cost averaging uh, buying in all the way down because you just don't know where it's going to actually really end mm -hmm. um, you don't know how much buying power is out there uh, so you have to uh, assume the worst 
but there's a lot out there and uh hope for the best one yeah and get uh, a really cheap cheap price right <laughs> exactly because that's <laughs> our favorite number da vinci that's that's yeah. our favorite number um but let me the let me... bonus thing is that i'm gonna be uh pounding the table all the way down in here i think you know what really no i'm gonna pound the table when we see a roll over in over around this uh 200 week moving average if it rolls over rolls up rolls up that's it we're out Ooh. we are off to the races pound the table yes. what are you doing if you're not buying bitcoin and you're planning to buy what's wrong with you because you right. know what you you could buy up here and i wouldn't have any problems with that if you uh, were dollar cost averaging Mm -hmm. Exactly, no because the green zone is the the green zone is the long term buying location, and that's exactly. exactly where you can buy. But please do not look for short term gains. The green location is only for the long term gains. So Bitcoin is low enough to buy in the long term between four thousand three hundred and seven thousand six hundred. In the short term, you might be looking at the previous minutes of that video. So thank you so much for covering that. And the the thing you said before, it was exactly. Exactly the last closing question for the Bitcoin content. Um, yeah, we wanted to ask you because this is really giving us a very positive outlook. Even though Bitcoin will be rolling over soon, maybe at the 61.85,380, maybe higher, no matter what, you think that um, yeah, the double bottom 3,150 or the 200 week MA at 3.5, uh, 3.6K might be the lowest and then we will be entering the bull market or yeah let the, the long-term bull market since we had the low most probably in the bear market might be technically by definition over but it still like feels like a bear market so we will have the confirmation once we hit these levels exactly once we have that confirmation it's time to pound on the table and i will be pounding that table <laughs> <laughs> sounds amazing man sounds amazing thanks for giving us all that great vibe and guys as you see we are doing a little bit more detailed analysis here because we are sorry that we haven't had all too much time within the last days and yeah even a week so we are allocating more time into that episode so you can get all this content and all those updates from da vinci also so that was the bitcoin content guys if you appreciate that time make sure you smash up the like button and leave all your thoughts in the comment section leave your thoughts for the bitcoin price predict for your own bitcoin price predictions and also for your next altcoin suggestions as you see in this episode we will cover three different altcoins if you want your personal altcoin to be covered within the next episodes make sure it's a one top 100 altcoin with real volume and then we can cover it because because we do not want to PND anything. So make sure top 100, um, good, good exchanges, real volume, and we will cover it. So now before we go into those three altcoins where you will be exactly telling us your game plan and your strategy, maybe we can cover the US dollar tether and Bitfinex story before, because you already said it in Moscow, but we weren't able to make an episode. Um, can you maybe a little bit elaborate a little bit more further on your own theory on your own hypothesis and what this whole tether fat story is all about yes well um uh, uh, if you haven't been living under a rock <laughs> last little while and i think you have it since you know if you're watching our crypto channel right you know that bitcoin took a huge dump after a huge news story broke about Bitfinex losing 800 and allegedly losing 850 million dollars in funds at crypto capital. Now, there is an this is a very interesting uh, piece of news. Uh, I expect, I always expect that one day that either uh, at the bottom, near the bottom of, uh, I expect it at the bottom of, of Bitcoin price. We're going to find out what's truly behind Tether. Somebody's going to rat out Tether uh, only to, to, to push the price lower so that they can get more Bitcoins. Uh, and I'm expecting that any time now. And I was surprised that this happened at, at the top of the market here because we're really close to, closer, closer to a top than a, than a bottom. Uh, and if you want to, you really want to shake the, the weak hands out. Uh, news like this at the bottom would would have would have really had more bigger burn, a lot larger big impact, larger impact in the market. Yes. 
Here, up here, it did not as much as as much. It did have a big impact, but not as much as it could have had. Not as much as they wanted, maybe, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And so I I, I see this this gapping down. This was definitely you know uh, market panic uh, behavior, uh, and all caused by this. Now, what my theory is is that consider this. Have you guys ever saw the movie Pretty Woman? Uh, Chris, have you seen that movie? I, I've seen it. It's a long time ago, and um, it was not really my taste, but I watched it, yes. <laughs> and one of the things uh, the guy, Richard Gere, was, the main character, did is like he bought companies and broke them up. And, and uh, what he would do is, he, in order to buy that the, the shipping company, is he would call up uh, people in, uh, in the government and tell them to hold off on a contract, right? How hard is it for like uh, uh, a billionaire to call up crypto capital of a bank uh, and say, "Hey, you know what? Can you like lose that funds for a little while, right? And cause them to uh, to to panic, right? These guys to panic. And then, and if if they didn't get the results they wanted because you know people are are not getting their funds and not ratting them out, they were waiting for somebody else to rat them out." What they could do is easily call up the, the attorney general's office in New York and tell them what's going on and have them go after them. Now, this is a hypothesis of mine. There's no evidence, a shred of evidence of this. But when you're in the big money game, you got to expect this to happen, yeah. right? You're going to have big enemies. I mean, we will, agree, we will agree all on the fact that we have been manipulated at least a few times within the last, I don't know, a few years. So um, the, it's not like impossible that what you are saying there is actually true because we all know that there are some people shorting the market heavily and they want the price to go down. And if there is any um, chance for them to do so, since, I mean, USDT is not disclosing their holdings, their, their, their reserves they have. So this is the perfect playground to spin up that story. I mean, the, 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 the basic, the basic um, things about that story, are the, the setup for that story is basically perfect. So um, it really makes sense what you are saying there. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And uh, another thing is that this actually sends signs a, a slightly positive light on um, Tether because they, they moved funds from the Tether account to Bitfinex. So this means they have at least the $650 million and probably a little bit more because they need to, to support withdrawals, of course, uh, under this uh, uh, under Tether. So the positive thing, is I don't think Tether has 100% reserves. There's no way. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you did, you'd show us. Show me the money. Yeah. yeah. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is the, the six hundred million, for example, they have six hundred million being lent out to the to the Bitfinex. Then they probably need another part of six hundred million to 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 keep the liquidity flowing. But then there is still something like a gap of eight hundred million, maybe in the worst case. So there there is still, I mean, your hypothesis, as we know, you are the oracle. It might be even true like always, but there is still the probability that there is something shady with US dollar tether. And we wanted to show you guys something on the screen right now. Um, if someone could just put the timestamp of that in the, uh, in, the, in the comment section, because this is really mind blowing. Let us sh show you a quick part of their white paper. If you haven't watched that already, we have shown that in a year ago in, the, in one of our episodes already. So we will show it now again and check out what they wrote in their white paper. Obviously, take it with a pinch of salt. It does not mean that they are also already doing that, but it is pretty funny. They didn't phrase that perfectly. So check that out. Um, it's right here. So it's under the point implementation weaknesses and there are very legit points. We could go bankrupt just as any business. Our bank could go insolvent. That's also very legit. All of that is very legend. But check out how they phrase that. We could abscond with the reserve funds. So guys, you I mean, you cannot make that up. Why should someone write it in that way? This is the US dollar tether white paper. We could abscond with the reserve funds. So. Um, at least that wasn't phrased perfectly, especially now when those stories are coming up. If you look into the white paper and you can read something like that, 
it's maybe not the best strategy to write a white paper looking for uh, going forward. And um, what what do you say about that line, Da Vinci? Well, I understand why they wrote it. It was just mostly to uh, to point out what your risks, the individual risks are. I think what they should have said uh, with that is that here's why that risk is low and provided evidence of why that risk is low, such as uh, proof that if they decide to do that, they will be uh, charged with fraud, for example, uh, in this jurisdiction. Yes. Right? Producing, it's, it's still not, it's still possible. It could run off of the money. Yes. Right? But it lowers the probability of that happening because, hey, you know what? We're going to be responsible. And, you know what? If we're not, this is our consequences for, for not being doing so. And, and, you know, the authorities will probably come and track us down and take back the money. Yeah. They could have done a lot of things better, at least. And um, mm -hmm. let's say your hypothesis is right and they have way more funds than the people e expect. I think we still agree upon that there is a gap between the actual reserve amount of reserves and the total amount of US dollar tether being in circulation. Um, I mean, because why shouldn't you prove that you are holding that reserves? It's the same with Craig Wright. If you can show that you are right the loud way, you would do it the loud way. Why shouldn't you do it? If you can just, as Craig Wright, just move, a, um, just sign a transaction or just move a Satoshi, why shouldn't you do it and finally prove it if, if it's so important for you to prove it? So if they would love to show and prove that they are holding enough reserve funds, they would just do it. So, but you said hey, basically maybe the gap is way smaller than we think. Yeah, exactly. I think uh, I think they do have a large amount of money, else they wouldn't have been able to loan that much money to the finesse. Uh, I think I believe that their gap is like maybe a hundred million, two hundred million dollars, which is enough to spook the market. Yeah. Um, but uh, not enough to say, hey, you know what? These guys are totally insolvent. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Uh, That's probably why they're not they're not doing a proper audit is that they're 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 missing something some of that money and they're trying to get it back and for whatever reason I don't know why whether they've spent it or or they're they're just reserving it or as part of their their hidden agreed agenda or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, but, but Da Vinci, it makes sense. And also let's wait and see how that plays out. Because, um, yeah, if, if again Tether recovers, because it's not the first FUD. It, there were already like five FUD stories about it. And if it recovers, we already saw a few people taking advantage, making potential arbitrage because of the price spread. And if that plays out, those guys will make huge gains again. Tether will be back in place and everything will be fine again until the next tether fat occurs but still it is mind-blowing to see your um, hypothesis because if that turns out to be true we we have been played with um, again and again i mean it will be it will be like the hundredth time the ways or the decision makers or the very wealthy guys in the world are playing with the majority and um yeah sucking in their money so um thank you so exactly. much exactly so let's go on to some altcoin trade information now Because, like, you know what, I'm sure people are, like, starving for some altcoins. <laughs> and, you know, if you want to see how what to, what to buy, right, because a lot of people ask me, well, what should I buy, Vinci? I don't know what to buy. Uh, well, you know what, the market's slowing down, right, and a lot of things are high, too high, you got to wait. But there's always a market somewhere to buy. And we will show you that here at the Vinci Codes uh, net uh, Twitter page. Um, Jay's doing an awesome job. Um, he's 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 uh, buying up coins and uh, and doing very well. Uh, here I like this this uh, coin that he put one percent. I wouldn't have got. And looking at the chart, it looked like one percent was like a no brainer here. But unfortunately, when I go to the actual chart, I'm like, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just w also wanted to point out everyone who is interested in the Twitter page, the link is obviously also given down in the description down below. Make sure you follow Da Vinci Codes Net also on Twitter because always when you are starving for new content on our channel, you can always in the meantime check out the Twitter channel to, um, to get something for your eyes or to get something for your fingers um, trading and taking that forward. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, first. Yes. So 
looking at here, uh, we can see that the we're at the we're in a we're in a buy zone, right? Um, I've made some money on this already. I've like taken some profits on this coin, and I could have made lots of more. It looks like there's there was a trade down here to just get out the way to a double note. Did not. Uh, it was up here. There was a trade. There was a trade down here. So you could have gotten like around here to yeah. You could have gotten a double easily on this coin, and I'm sure. Uh, did uh, I'm sure he prop uh, Jay made some money on this because like he's been working on this for over a year now, so he knows exactly where to buy, and he's probably already got banged out a couple doubles on this already. But the interesting thing is, uh, even though I'm like a little nervous about this coin and going, uh, yeah, if this thing breaks these levels here, uh, we could be breaking down all the way down here. Right, uh, another fifty percent from where we are. So I kind of like want to approach this coin with a little bit of caution. Mm -hmm. um, it is a good thing that volume divergence is huge and clear. I mean, it's, I mean, when volume diverges like this, is generally like, oh my God, you you got to get in, you got to get in. It's, it's crazy. It's a huge divergence. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Volume is going up while its price is coming down. Yes. What's what's up with that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the people are just buying towards that that low, which is forming like the fourth time already. So it looks really really obvious. But as you know, always when it looks obvious, there might be some danger attached to it. So um, you are saying that once we break this very strong resistance there, which has been forming for a long long time right now, that there is a lot of air to the downside, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. So now that doesn't mean that this thing can this thing can break straight down. It means it could go like this, go all the way up here, form a head up to the sixty one point eight, and then smash all the way down, right? Because this that's that's just an easy level to come up to, and then come back down and and hurt everybody. But uh, yeah, it's worth the risk to to put in a small amount of money, point two five point five percent. Not a whole percentage wise, but yeah, I would uh, I would put some more bets down here, uh, just in case you, you get some cheap cheap coins, right? Because exactly. who doesn't like cheap cheap? Man, we <laughs> love cheap cheap. The market has come to us. We love cheap cheap prices because that's our favorite number. And the price, if someone, if if no one can see it right now, the price you would be looking at starting to scale in is 918 satoshis. Is that correct? Exactly. I mean, this is a low enough price to scale in. Even if even at the market buy, I don't I don't like doing market buys, but we're so far far away, uh, so we're so oversold, so badly oversold, and market divergence, and so much positive, so much things that makes this thing look so beautiful that doing a market buy is not gonna not gonna hurt you uh, at, at all because you're already at a really really low level here. Yeah. Okay, so so concluding that you would be saying that this is actually a very um, yeah promising setup. You would start scaling in at 918 satoshis, not at a percent, which is basically already nearly b nearby your highest buy-in rate, but maybe 0.25 percent, 0.5 percent, and um, then scaling even more and if it goes downwards but then maybe in higher steps because there is a high uh, there's a lot of air to the downside side or would you would you set in steep um like buy-in limit orders yeah so you, this is where your next level limit order for 0.25 percent and then another maybe like if you do 0.25 percent here another 0.25 percent here and another 50 percent 0.5 percent down here so you further get, further lower way further lower yeah. than in usual cases because there is so much air you would put a lot of space between that by in orders in case we break that resistance but in case we don't break it you are already in 0.25 percent or 0.5 percent because you think this is a nice trading setup right now at 918 satoshis Exactly. We're, we're, we're really, really good. This is a really good uh, coin section here to buy. It's just that we're one, we've hit this levels one, two, three, four, five times. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's I, a very stingy to give you five levels to buy it at and expect to go higher 
So it seems like so some people are cashing in. Some people are cashing in on that on that token. I'm I'm pretty sure. Also, we wanted to bring something up because um, this is basically short at midterm. For the long term, you can always also take the fundamental analysis into consideration. Obviously, the fundamentals will not have a huge impact on this resistance line to behold, or um, yeah, whether it's going do up or down in the short and midterm. But for the long term, it's most certainly very important. So what you can usually do is, and this is only a very short few seconds example, you can go to the website of MANA Decentralized Land, for example, and on, in that case, you can go, for example, to the marketplace, because the marketplace shows you a little bit of the traction of th on their platform. And what we can see right there is that it is actually used, which is good, but it's not used heavily. So we have to remind ourselves it's like a valuation of 50 million market cap and 50 million and then you have 1100 1, orders for parcels and only 380 orders for estates so that's fine but it's not like mind-blowingly fine like if you remember yourself on world of warcraft or so remember on the on the on the crazy volumes over there and on the high transactions over there and i think they made like 80, 80 million revenue in, in one year i can't remember which year it was but the traction on the platform was way higher back then so if you compare to other games for example this is one thing you could do what you can also do is you can check out for the amount of people trading there and also check out on the development they are pro pushing forward which is also not all too bad and even high compared to other utility token projects out there so it's not all too bad we just want to say as many projects out there they are overvalued but not highly overvalued as a lot of other projects out there so just wanted to we just wanted to remind you always also take some fundamental analysis into consideration when you want to take long-term trades so that being said let's go back to the content da vinci and sorry for interrupting you on that point no, no, not a problem. I think uh, people need to understand that fundamental analysis and technical analysis goes together. I think one of the things we should do um, uh, in the next next little videos is find a, a fundamental event such as, uh, I don't know, like uh, Bitcoin, the, the happening of the, the Litecoin yeah. and then mark it on the calendar because I can tell you exactly what's going to happen in that into that fundamental event. Uh, with that, with the pricing. So we find something like a date, uh, for example, let's just say uh, uh, Dash. They, they're supposed to be releasing Evolution, I don't know when. Mm -hmm. But but when they release Evolution, when they finally set a date and they really stick to that date, or not, actually, yeah. then there's, there's going to be a price effect by that, by that fundamental, fundamental information that would show up in the market and and i can show you what the what the price will do yeah. into that fundamental day and you know what's very interesting about that for many of these things especially for the halfening um th those events are partially priced in and partially not priced in so it's really interesting to check those news events out and to know what will be priced in what might be not priced in enough or what might be over ed exaggerated priced in so it will be very interesting to check that out we are really looking forward to do some yeah fundamental analysis on those news da vinci so thank you so much for um yeah for already announcing that and um, we cannot wait to do that because a lot of people have been <coughs> asking also for the lightning halving and so on so that will be interesting what's the next altcoin well this is an altcoin that uh, jay also did very well on. Uh, I'm not sure what he mean by meant by this, but uh, you can see that you know he had some buy orders all the way down, and this 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 what's this called? Fat Fla finger. Flash crash. <laughs> <laughs> what what so did you say? Uh, what what did you say? It's a fat finger. A fat finger. <laughs> a fat finger dump, <laughs> where you know somebody uh, pressed a button to sell, and they sold everything into the market. And uh, basically, they didn't want to do that. They just wanted to sell it at the current price. But they did a, a they did a a, um, a sell order at whatever price, yeah. and it just took the price all the way down because there wasn't enough liquidity in the market to absorb all that they were selling. So that's what's called a fat. Usually, usually it's caused by somebody doing that. Basically, oh, you know what? I got millions of these coins. I'm going to sell them all right now. 
and they just hit a sell button to sell order at whatever price, and and it just just like it goes all the way down. Dumping the order book there to, down. To pick it up. Dumping the order book. So it's Fat Finger or Rack Finger. And what we also did is we went into the chart and also we checked out the volume. For everyone who is saying now, oh, what's the volume for that? The volume for that specific hour where the flash crash happened was 500,000. So, guys, that was a significant volume. Just wanted to point that out also. So, yeah, let, let's go into the charts. What, so what, what is that actually about? And what would you be your game plan right now for everyone who missed that flash crash? Because, I mean, we are at a certain price right now which is higher than the lowest point but it's still going down so what's your game plan on that altcoin wow well looking at the the volume uh we, why here let me just add more uh studies here and looking at the volume looks like oh looks like somebody somebody knew something about this this market this thing was is that even surprising in crypto that someone knows something what other people don't know and then acts on the on the marketplace before the news happens yeah it's somebody like, knew something about this because the volume is saying that show me basically. the charts show me the charts and i will tell you the, tell you the news isn't it <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly and they just went see ya they were like okay I, I, they found out this information and they sold right away in a panic and uh, yeah, because um, there's these guys are getting somebody's getting out. People are getting out in droves here. Uh, I don't know what the fundamental news is, if there is any. But if we do get the news, uh, if there is, if there is any fundamental news, I'd like to know what it is. Mm -hmm. If there's no news and this is happening, it's coming. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, and look, the, the Bollinger Bands have been squeezing before. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Look at, the, look at the squeeze yeah. and then it just died. Wow. So see ya. See ya when I see ya. So, so yes, you, would you, actually, would you would actually refrain from taking a trade right now. Exactly. I would hold off uh, until, uh, let's see here. Well, the thing is, right, you can't wait until the news actually comes out. On why this thing is dumping, uh, only because um, uh, it will be too late. I think the price will start to turn around on that news of okay, negative news it depends on how bad the negative news is. I mean, it could be just you know, uh, oh yeah, our system's not working, but we will be getting it working in next year, right? So as long as they're still, they're still working on it, right, this coin will still have value. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're talking. You've got. You've, we've already passed the seventy-eight point six level. Uh, it is not turning around. We're oversold on the will on the the MACD. This is the the Willy has just gone nuts. I don't know what the hell is trying to say. <laughs> but the RSI, we're oversold, and there's no, this thing looks does not want to do anything positive at all let's do in a short time frame what, what we yeah. could do is just uh, as as the as the closing question what what would actually because we already surpassed um the 78.6 what would actually be your buy-in price um where where you would say okay this is now a good re risk return ratio for me right now would it be the previous low which you mark there as the bottom of the fibonacci levels right here is where you want to be buying right here if we haven't already surpassed it which we haven't right here is where you want to like think about buying i think we'll probably get the news somewhere soon in there um somewhere soon in this location if we haven't if we don't already this is really at the, the top of the market and so you don't have much room here uh for this to to go further down if because there's a lot of people already out. So, um, so you yeah. would start scaling in at the at this um, level at the 88.6 level. You would start scaling in, and um, then then I don't know cost average down to to a, another certain level. Exactly. I'd start your 0.25 percent if you don't have any of this, because this is cheap. This is yeah. cheap. There's no understands or bucks about it. This is cheap. But there's something wrong. Yes. Right. So you have to consider that there's something wrong here okay so yeah 
uh, you might lose your money. But but for, for, for Mena, oh. just to conclude it, I mean, for Mena, the, it was pretty positive. And now for Waves, it is pretty negative. But it's also very important to point that out because there might be also some people wanting to a uh, act as a contrarian and buy the fear. But sometimes it's not all the best thing to buy the fear or to act as a contrarian. You have to look more into it. What is it all about? Why is it dumping and so on? So for Waves, with the amount of knowledge we have right now about the project, you would still refrain from buying in and you would wait for the 88.6 level at least to go in with a small amount like 0.25%. Yeah, exactly. Or Another thing you could wait for is when this uh, hourly chart here, which looks like a disaster on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> a disaster <laughs> on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're coming up each and every episode with some new funny words. For real. We have to make a collection of that. Okay. Okay. So anyways, you could wait until you have some Wing action in the hourly. And then, you know, and, and it breaks out above the 13 EMA and comes back to it and then go, OK, well, I'm willing to take a risk. If you want to time your, 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 um, your, your buys a little bit and then maybe if you want to do it to trade, uh, you could trade out uh, at, at the uh, 200 hour moving average. Uh, there's definitely trades here. Just uh, you have to wait until they set up. Um, as for the little old lady. She better not spend a lot of money on this thing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks for concluding that. I mean, this one is not looking all too positive right now, but it's already the second altcoin of the three. So the first one was positive. The second one was comparably negative, but we still have a buy-in price from DaVinci J15. And now we can get into the third altcoin. And as I can see, the time is like already running away from us. We are already at 52 minutes in the video. So um, yeah, but still, let's check out that altcoin because you have some interesting things to say about that also. Yeah, I mean, we have like right away, I can see that there's a dabble forming here on the daily, which is positive. Um, we got like here, you see it um, up, down, up, down, a nice little W in the volume. Uh, I'd wait for this candle to break to, um, to close. Uh, if it closes with this ab above, and we have this dabble here on the, on the RSI, we're great, greatly over uh, oversold uh, and a dabble happening, you have explosive move uh, that's that's possible in this thing. Um, a dabble is only with a break like this, the dabble is three to one, but generally it gives you a lot more um, when this happens where you have an up, down, up, down, and cross over the uh, uh, into the um, into the average mo volume moving average here. Uh, for on balance volume, the EMA of the on balance volume, when it crosses that, uh, that's look out, look out above, man, or look out below if it crosses down, of course. So uh, yeah, it's looking really, really good for a trade, and because uh, let's see here, can the little old lady make any money on this? Let's see here. We like the explosive not. moves, the vo volcanic <laughs> moves, Da Vinci. Yeah, the little lady can't make any money on this uh, yet, but um, not probably not until the next alt season. But yeah. she's she should be a buyer down here. Yeah, and there are already some crazy fundamental events being announced right now. For example, there's one 13 hours ago, Neo partners with Zoix to enable Neo token payment using Apple and Samsung Pay in all stores. And um, I, w I saw a lot of other ones. Neo 3.0 roadmap. Yes, they are very close to 3.0. Um, obviously, we have to check the legitimacy of that, but they posted that in their official Telegram. So um, yeah, it's it is pretty uh, pretty exciting right now. Looking at the charts and maybe also comparing that to some news events coming up in the future. Yeah, the only my only concern is that. If this thing breaks down, it's going to break down hard and fast down to here. There's a lot down of yeah. like a 50, more than 50%. Yeah. Uh, so be careful, people. If this thing breaks down, it's, uh, it doesn't look like it wants to with yeah. the dabble happening here and oversold and uh, the MACD wants to turn up and it's got like a divergence on the MACD mm. and there's lots of evidence that this is turning up. 
But this could just be like, okay, uh, yeah, no. Right? <laughs> yeah, no. So, so <laughs> lo looking at that, and I love this, yeah, no, it's like really ch Chilean, I think. Um, <laughs> lo looking, looking at that. Um, it, it really reminds one, even though the indicators are completely different, reminds one on also on the uh, main um, setup where the upside is high. But one, once we go through that resistance we have, we have a lot of air to the downside. So um, would you suggest for people to make maybe a steep stop loss level or so to, to prevent yourself from that risk or, or just yes. set very, very far away by in orders to cost average down? Well, it depends on how what you want to do, right? If you have the time and patience to deal with this, the stop losses and stuff like that, that's fine. I mean, there's options in Coinergy to do stop losses, and you can do so really easily in Coinergy. Uh, and same with Pandora's wallet. So you can do so and set the stop loss and say, okay, you know what, get me out of this thing. If it breaks down, like right down here at uh, 17 uh, at yep. 170,000 sats, uh, yeah, you should be out. You should be like so far gone. Yeah. It's not funny. <laughs> right? so, so, but if it holds this level, right, you can like keep that. You can keep, you can keep, you can stay in this, this trade. Mm -hmm. uh, for the little old ladies out there, you know, I would uh, only put in a, a small amount of money. A half percent <laughs> is fine, the other half can come down. Like right about the, at the seven thousand. Wow, that's far 7, away. Seven thousand cents. That's far away. That would be a great cost average down, actually. Even if it's the very worst case for every trader, you are have the probability to cost average crazily down if you buy like, wow, what's that? Like sixty percent down already from the from the previous buying price so exactly. th that's that's exactly. a very good conclusion and thank you so much for that so maybe concluding that is for mena it looks comparably positive you have set up all uh, you you told us all your probable buy-in prices where you where you might tip, um, take profits from the table for neo also it's like a similar setup even though the indicators are different and for waves it's pretty pretty dangerous right now and you would refrain from taking a trade from that so all in all, that was an amazing episode and we will also come to a very important point in the end right now. To conclude it, guys, for the Bitcoin um, for the Bitcoin prices, there might be a big roller coaster right ahead of us for um, yeah, US dollar tether. If you didn't understand it, just go back and watch it again because that's a mind-blowing theory. Let's see how that plays out actually. And for the altcoins, we just had that Mena um, comparably positive, Neo comparably positive and Waves. It is a bit dangerous right now. So. Concluding all of that, in the end, we want to ask, because a lot of people are actually asking us also on Telegram, how is it going forward with Pandora's wallet? Do you have any updates for us? And um, yeah, maybe new coins being integrated or so. So how is that actually going to play out in the future? Yes, we're going to, uh, next, uh, next week or so, the next week or so, or at the end of this week, actually, for sure. Uh, we're going to have uh, six new coins mm -hmm. and also uh, we're going to be up fixing a few bugs in the stop losses so that we can speed them up and make sure that they work perfectly for our customers and myself is concluded. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hope that our customers are too. Yes, everyone is. And guys, if you are also, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Check out Pandora's Wallet. The link is given down in the description down below. Da Vinci is his biggest client. He is using that heavily. He will be also using it heavily in the future. We checked it out. We very like it. There is a 30-day free trial, so make sure you check that out. I mean, cheap, it's free free. It's not even cheap cheap. 30 days free, guys. Check it out. Link in the description down below. Free free is even more our favorite number, but usually that's impossible by trading. But for Panora's wallet, it is possible for 30 days. So check it out yeah. in the description down below. That and if you need some more time than 30 days, just let us know and I'll be glad to be able to, to extend your, your trial for you. Wow, that's so nice. That's so nice. So guys, make sure you check it out again. Da Vinci, thank you so much for taking so much time. Like we are one hour in already. We have to end the live stream right now. And we have been Skyping already for a way longer time. So thank you so much for taking your time. And hopefully we will go to our next journey. Moscow was amazing. So that being said, guys, see you at the next episode. Make sure you smash the like button and be here for the next episode on the MM Crypto channel. Also Da Vinci J15's channel in the description down below. And as always, guys. Bye-bye.